Today we're going to explore whether you can use a solar thermal heater like the one I've constructed here to provide useful heat for your greenhouse. Before we get into the details of how this system was built and whether or not it can actually serve as an effective heat source for a greenhouse, we need to talk a little bit about the theory of operation. Basically the objective of the system is to heat a large quantity of water during the daytime that serves as a heat ballast to release that heat at nighttime when the temperatures drop. We do that by actively circulating an RV antifreeze through the system with an electric pump. The electric pump moves the antifreeze into the solar collector, which is a series of 10 evacuated tubes. The evacuated tubes allow the sun's heat to be transferred into the tubes even when the air temperature outside is quite cold. The tubes can reach a very high temperature. As the coolant is warmed in the tubes, it is later pumped out of the other end of the collector and back into our ballast. In the ballast, it encounters a heat exchanger, which allows the efficient transfer of the accumulated heat from the antifreeze into the water. And that'll do it for the theory of operation. If you're interested in learning some of the limits, theoretical and practical, as it relates to solar heating, stay tuned because I'll cover that later in the video. Let's talk really briefly about the system that I've set up here. Basically what you see is 10 small thermal collectors. These are evacuated cylinders and then I've created a basically a manifold of 10 copper pipes using T's going into each cylinder and uh, circulating through those pipes via these hoses is some uh, uh, coolant or some antifreeze basically to uh, prevent anything from freezing on the cold night. So we're up here in zone four, so it freezes quite often. Originally, I tried to create this with an open loop system, which means there's water circulating through here. But the first day that it hit 25 degrees, um, the water froze and the system was useless. So had to be re-engineered. Let's go into the greenhouse and take a look at the setup. Okay, here we are in the greenhouse. And you can see behind me is the water. So this barrel of water is basically our heat sink. And the objective here is to accumulate all of the sun's rays from outside and collect it here in this barrel of water. I have a thermometer here which will monitor the temperature throughout the day and uh, as many BTUs as possible that we can get into this barrel of water in theory should be released at night into the atmosphere and since we're in an enclosed greenhouse a lot of that energy should be contained and usable to uh, keep this space warm. Now because we're in zone 4 I also have an electric heater so for our purposes here, and this time of year, it's November, end of November, this will never be enough heat unless we had the entire thing covered in hot boiling water. So basically what we're trying to accomplish is supplemental heat. And in the springtime, I think that this could be the exclusive source of heat because the, uh, the chills aren't quite as cold at night and usually we just have some frost and some things like that. So this would take the edge off of that. All right, let's talk about the construction very quickly here. What I've got is uh, 3 8 inch tubing going into our heat sink, our water barrel, and in the water barrel is an old car radiator. And so that allows the uh, efficient transfer of the heat accumulated from the transfer fluid into the water barrel in this closed loop system without having any frozen lines because we are using antifreeze here. I have a small pump that I've purchased, so this is an active heater as opposed to a passive one. You could easily convert this into a passive system if you're doing it on your own by raising your barrel up above your heat source. So if that were the case, uh, you'd be able to do that. Because of the layout we've got here, um, that wasn't practical and also this is strictly experimental. So uh, there's no sense in trying to reconfigure the entire yard to make that work. Yeah, pretty much that's it. Hose goes to the manifold that I mentioned earlier. Manifolds put into the tubes. The tubes are insulated with uh, mylar. Uh, in addition to the mylar, the tubes also have pipe uh, insulators um, kind of shoved into them to, to maintain the heat inside of the pipes. So I've created this little frame to hold the evacuated tubes. You can buy these online, but they're very expensive. So I just made this crappy one. It's facing about 60 degrees towards the sun based on our latitude. And uh, the copper comes across the top. These are about 18 inches in. The tubes are about 24 inches long. This tubing should be insulated. And uh, I've made a little connector here. Uh, it was a lot of soldering, a little plastic connector to do everything. And then everything's held together with hose clamps. So how much energy were we able to collect with the system? Well, in about five and a half hours of sunshine, our water barrel accumulated 4,008 BTUs. To put that into context, 4,008 BTUs is about equivalent of running a 1,500 watt electric heater 
for 45 minutes. Now, if we look at it in terms of BTUs per hour, we're right at 728 BTUs per hour of sunshine. So that's not too bad considering my calculated maximum was around 891 BTUs per hour. We're about 81% of that calculated maximum value. So it's actually higher than I would have thought considering the lack of insulation and some other inefficiencies in this system. Now, is it actually a practical system? Well, over the course of six months with the amount of observed collection of energy, um, we're looking at about $22.50 worth of savings if we were running it versus an electric heater. Um, that's not including the additional energy required to operate the pump. Now, if you wanted to run it in a warmer climate or somewhere that gets more sunshine or somewhere with a more optimal positioning where you get more than five and a half hours of sunshine, it might make sense and you may be able to collect significantly more BTUs because you would have more exposure to the sun. Also with higher relative air temperatures, the necessary heating is actually reduced and so the system may make more sense in that regard as well. Now in terms of how much the system cost, let me grab a little cost card that I put together. My total cost for building this was $138, and that's if you include the evacuated tubes. My evacuated tubes have been around for a while, um, so really all together it was around $66. Most of that money going for copper, uh, copper fittings, and tubing. So hopefully, well, and not to mention the pump as well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how much this system costs to build. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I have a detailed analysis video that I was putting together, but I thought it might be too boring. So uh, if you'd like to see that, uh, let me know and I will put it together. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.